Hey guys, this is Jerry. So A Beautiful Mind came out in 2001, stars Jennifer Connelly and Russell Crowe, and it won an Academy Award for Best Picture. So, very highly regarded in Hollywood. It's about game theorist John Nash, a Princeton guy who um, had to suffer through schizophrenia, but he was also mathematically brilliant. So first of all, let me just explain that the movie is very, very fictional. It doesn't really get anything right about John Nash's life. That's not how schizophrenia is. That's not how he experienced it. What the movie did was just like took creative liberties for the sake of plot. But what I'm going to talk about in this vlog is how incorrect it got the Nash equilibrium. So for those of you who remember the movie, there's a scene in the bar when, during the early days of um, John Nash's life in the movie where he's with a bunch of friends and they're talking about how to hit on the girls and John Nash comes up with a quote unquote a very brilliant way, right? So there's like a blonde girl with like three or four of her brunette friends. And so John Nash makes the assumption, okay, the blonde girl's really pretty, everyone's gonna go hit on the blonde girl, and they're gonna get rejected, and then they're gonna go hit on the brunettes. And the brunettes are gonna be like, well, you hit on my friend first, screw you, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do anything, go away. So what John Nash was saying was, yeah, um, what you do is you hit on the brunettes first, and then, um, and then the brunettes will be like, oh, they hit on me, yay, and then one of you left over hits on the blonde, and she's gonna feel all left alone, and then she'll be more likely to um, be receptive. So it kind of sounds okay, kind of sounds brilliant, but that's not what John Nash studied all his life. He didn't study what that scenario is. It's called a sequential game. John Nash didn't study sequential games. And let me explain. I drew a little graph so you can understand what I'm talking about. All right. So in this situation, this is called a sequential game. One person, let's assume it's just between me and a friend, let's say me and Phil, and then there are two girls in the bar, a blonde and a brunette. So, in a sequential game, one of us gets to choose to do something first, right? So if I choose to go for the blonde, then Phil can say, okay, do I go for the brunette, do I go for the blonde, or do I bail? Or then I can, or I can decide, okay, I'm gonna go for the blonde, and then I go hit on the blonde, and then Phil decides, okay, does he hit on the brunette, does he hit on the blonde, or does he bail? That's a sequential game. Very, very interesting, fascinating part of game theory. People analyze sequential games all the time. But that's not what John Nash is about. That's not what he studied. That's not, if you applied game theory, especially the Nash equilibrium correctly in this situation, that's not how it's supposed to go. What a Nash equilibrium deals with, it's called a simultaneous game. In other words, I don't get to go first. My friend doesn't get to go first. We all have to go decide to do something at the same time. A simultaneous game is not like how it is in a beautiful mind. Okay, I get to choose to hit on someone first, then my friends get to, no, no, no. We all decide to go hit on them together. And then simultaneously, we decide who to hit on. That's the beauty of a, si of a simultaneous game because you're making decisions not knowing what the other person has done. You can only assume what they will do knowing three things. One, that they'll decide rationally. Two, they also know that you'll decide rationally. And three, we both know what the rules of this game is. So I did a little very, very um, short graph. This is a simultaneous game. So me versus him, we're deciding at the same time. Okay, and this looks intimidating, but I will explain this to you. It's actually quite easy once you get it. So if we're actually in a bar and it's just me and Phil, Let's say I'm here, okay? If Phil picks to go hit on the blonde, I have to decide at the same time, do I hit on the blonde, the brunette, or the or I bail? So if Phil hits on the blonde, we ignore these columns. What happens? If I, if I go hit on the blonde and Phil hits on the blonde, well, we both get rejected. Negative nine's like, oh, no, oh, that sucks. So that's bad, right? We don't want to choose that. If Phil hits on the blonde and I hit on the brunette, well, you know, she'll, she might be more receptive. He'll get rejected, but I, I get something. If I bail and he hits on the blonde, he gets rejected. It's very bad for him. Nothing happens to me. So here, it's, it makes sense for me to hit on the brunette if Phil gets, hits on the blonde. Okay. So if Phil hits on the brunette, okay. If Phil hits on the brunette then, and I hit on the blonde, 
then I get rejected. If Phil hits on the brunette and I hit on another brunette, then okay, good. If Phil hits on the brunette and um, I bail, then nothing. So you can do that with this column too. In a simultaneous game, the Nash equilibrium will all be will all be some. This is the Nash equilibrium. This is what under the rules knowing that we both know the rules and that we're both rational, we're both going to pick to hit on a brunette. Now we can extend this to a three-person scenario. Let's say there were there were um, a blonde and you know, a few of her brunette friends, and then it was me, Phil, and Scott. So now all three of us have to simultaneously decide who to hit on. And again, you, you, do, a, you do this four-by-four four little thing that I drew before here, but this time because it's it's three people making the decision. It's a little bit more complicated. So let's say this is Scott. S we're basically thinking as Scott. So if I'm Scott and I think, okay, what happens if Jerry, as in me, so what happens if Jerry hits on the blonde and Phil hits on the blonde? So it makes more sense for me to hit on the brunette. What if Jerry hits on the the blonde and then Phil hits on the brunette. Well, I, I should still hit on the brunette. And then you compare the best result here with the best result here, right? And then you realize, oh, okay, it's it's much better if I just go hit on a brunette. Again, it, it, if you guys don't completely understand this, it doesn't matter. You can go read up on this yourself and go figure it out yourself. My point in explaining what a real simultaneous game is, what John Nash really was studying is to just show you Hollywood, man, for the sake of simplicity, for the sake of, I don't know, f writing that flows, a lot of times they don't really show you the right thing. Game theory is beautiful. And what we did was just touch on the very, very, very tip of the iceberg because eventually when you get deep into game theory, you're gonna be using like partial derivatives and all these like advanced multivariable calculus things to really figure out stuff. So what we were doing, we're just rationally doing it based on simple math. John Asham won the Nobel Prize because he brilliantly figured out a bunch of things about how rational agents work under simultaneous conditions, knowing the rules and knowing mutual knowledge of rationality. So I highly recommend you guys read up on game theory. The Prisoner's Dilemma is a very easy way to access it. A lot of people talk about it, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. I'm sure many of you haven't even seen me break down that sort of simultaneous game in a three-person scenario. It's pretty fun. You can do it with four people or five people, but it's going to be hard to picture it. You're going to have to use more math. In any case, I really hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Um, I just, I studied a lot of psychology. I studied a lot of sort of economics related classes in college and kind of a shame I haven't really showed you guys some of the things, some of those great interesting things you learn, but I'm going to start doing that more because one, it interests me and hopefully when you um, watch my channel you learn something too. And I thank you guys again for all your comments. I love you guys and I'll talk to you guys next time.